We all know about the Suez Canal, cutting shipping times between Europe and Asia since 1869. It's one of the most important waterways on the planet, right? But what if we told you that Europe is building its own Suez Canal right now? This isn't just another canal, it's Europe's answer to the Suez, and it's set to revolutionize transportation across the continent. What's even more interesting is that this isn't just France's first major canal project in over five decades, it's also going to be one of Europe's most ambitious infrastructure undertakings to date. It's set to link three of Europe's major countries, France, Belgium, and the Netherlands. That means it's going to open up trade routes like never before, making transportation quicker, easier, and more efficient between these countries. That means the Seine Nord Europe Canal could rival the Suez Canal in significance by opening up new routes for transporting goods, not just across Europe, but to the world. But wait, here's where it gets better. This isn't just about moving goods more efficiently. It's about reducing our carbon footprint. It's predicted that this canal could remove 1 million trucks off Europe's highways each year. The amount of CO2 saved by this canal over the next 40 years could potentially reach 50 million tons. That's like taking an entire country's worth of cars off the road. Fewer trucks would mean less pollution and more efficient transportation. Could this be the future of eco-friendly shipping, or is it too good to be true? Stay tuned with us until the end, as we'll be looking at all the aspects of this new engineering marvel. The St. Nord Europe Canal isn't just a waterway, it's part of a massive logistics network that includes four multimodal port platforms. These hubs will connect railways, highways, and waterways into one seamless system. These industrial ports are going to fuel regional economies, create jobs, and even boost tourism along the route. But here's a twist you might not expect. What if the St. Nord Europe Canal becomes Europe's next big tourist destination? With 200 kilometers of scenic banks open to walkers, bikers, and boaters, this canal is set to be used for more than just shipping. It could be your next European adventure. All right, let's start with the basics. The St. Nord Europe Canal will stretch 107 kilometers, connecting Compiègne to Obencholobach, but that's just the start. This canal will cross 64 communities in the Hauts de France region, bringing them closer to a modern transportation network that's both efficient and eco-friendly. And fun fact, to build this massive project, up to 6,000 people will be working on site. That's a huge mobilization of resources and manpower. Imagine all the jobs this project has created. If we take a closer look, this canal will be made functional and efficient, as it includes some incredible engineering feats, such as these seven locks that will help manage water levels, including a key lock that links to the Canal de Nord. And let's not forget the three canal bridges, including one that's over one kilometer long, crossing the beautiful Somme River. The canal is designed to handle all the big stuff. At 54 meters wide and 4.5 meters deep, It'll accommodate large barges and allow for smooth, efficient transport of goods. But it's not just about moving things quickly, it's also about smart infrastructure. With 62 road and rail crossings integrated into the canal's design, it ensures minimal disruption to the region's existing transport networks. It'll also feature 10 docks for the transshipment of goods, making it a key hub for regional and international trade. And when it comes to the canal structure, we've got 7 meters of free height under bridges to allow for seamless navigation of large vessels. But what's especially cool about this canal is its eco-friendly design. A 14 million cubic meter water reservoir will help manage the water supply north of Peron, and more than 1,200 hectares of environmental improvements will restore and protect nature along the canal route. The canal banks will also feature 25 kilometers of lagoon banks, creating habitats for wildlife while improving water quality. By 2035, the canal is expected to transport 17.4 million tons of goods annually, playing a big part in reducing Europe's carbon footprint. In fact, over 40 years, the project is set to avoid 50 million tons of CO2 emissions. In case you were wondering, the canal's locks will use 100% recycled water, so there's no need to draw from groundwater sources. It's a win-win for both industry and the environment. And it gets better. The project is also committed to reforestation. With 850,000 trees set to be planted, this canal will help boost biodiversity and restore natural landscapes. They're also making sure wildlife can move safely through the area with 45 spaces dedicated to animal crossings. And not only is the canal eco-friendly, but it's also people-friendly. The project will create 200 kilometers of banks accessible to walkers, and 75 kilometers of hedges will add to the green space along the route. What's cool about this project is that it's not just for big businesses. The canal will have pleasure ports for river cruisers and yachts in places like St. Christ Briost and Elaine's, boosting tourism and giving local communities access to this incredible waterway. Imagine exploring these beautiful regions by boat, with cruises that take you through beautiful landscapes in France. This canal is going to be a hub for both commerce and leisure. Now here's something even more fascinating. The most significant part of Europe's new St. Nord Europe Canal isn't just the technology behind it, but rather what's hidden beneath the ground it's being built on. 
The canal's route cuts through some of the most historic and tragic battlefields of the First World War. Areas like Peron on the edge of the Somme battlefield and Cambrai further north, both of which were sites of intense battles during the war. It's speculated that around 100,000 soldiers from the Great War still lie beneath these fields, towns, and villages along the Western Front. According to Claire Horton, Director General of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, this massive canal project offers a rare opportunity to recover and honor some of these forgotten soldiers. This infrastructure project could lead to the recovery of remains from some of the fiercest battle zones of World War I. Potentially hundreds of soldiers could be found and properly laid to rest. As construction progresses through these historic areas, excavations are already underway. Teams from the CWGC, alongside French authorities and the Société du Canal, have begun exploratory digs along the canal's path. This work is expected to continue throughout 2024, just ahead of the main canal construction. Remains found along the canal route will be transported to Burains, where experts will attempt to identify the soldiers. However, positive identification is extremely difficult. Even with modern technology like DNA sampling, many soldiers will remain unknown. To prepare for the remains recovered during the canal dig, the loose British cemetery in Pas de Calais is being extended by the CWGC. It's expected to provide space for up to 1,200 bodies, giving these soldiers a final resting place over a century after they lost their lives. It's a reminder that beneath the surface of this groundbreaking project lies an opportunity to reconnect with the past and finally give these soldiers the honor and recognition they deserve. However, the project isn't something new. It's actually been in the works for decades, with twists and turns that could rival a political drama. It all started back in 1975, when the idea of connecting the Seine Basin in France to the Northern European waterways first came about. At the time, the existing Canal du Nord, which had only been opened in 1966, was already showing its age. Built on designs from the 19th century, it just couldn't handle the demands of modern freight traffic. That's when they decided to build a new, supersized canal that could fit Europe's largest boats and connect France to Belgium, the Netherlands, and beyond. But it wasn't until the 1990s that the ball really started rolling. Public debates were held, people weighed in, and by 2002, the French government chose the zone for the canal's route, a 1-3 kilometer wide corridor. By 2004, it was registered as a priority project for France. They spent years consulting with local communities, holding public meetings, and refining the plans. Everything seemed to be moving full steam ahead, and by 2006, the project got approval, and the following year, a public inquiry was held to get everything in order. Now here's where things get tricky. In 2010, the first preparatory works began, they even lowered a section of the A29 motorway to make room for the canal, but then the 2008 financial crisis hit. The project was supposed to be a public-private partnership, but the economic downturn made that impossible. By 2011, everything was on hold. Fast forward to 2013, with environmental and climate issues gaining importance, France wasn't ready to give up on this waterway. A reconfiguration mission was launched, led by Remy Pavros, and by 2015, the project was redesigned to optimize both economic and environmental performance. After more consultations, the canal's route was slightly adjusted, and in 2017, the new public inquiry was completed, giving the project a fresh boost. A major turning point came in 2016, when the Société du Canal Saint Nord Europe was created. This new public company took over the project, with local authorities and the European Union stepping in as key partners. Local officials were determined to push this forward, and by 2020, the Société was transformed into a local public establishment, the first time a regional project of this scale was led by local communities. In 2019, the European Commission formally backed the project, securing European Union funding for up to 50% of its cost. That's when it really became clear. This wasn't just a French canal anymore. This was a European priority. The Seine Nord Europe Canal will also be a cornerstone of the Third Industrial Revolution in Hauts de France, a movement focused on eco-friendly, sustainable development. The canal is part of this vision, designed with high environmental standards. We're talking HQE certification levels of eco-design. And the numbers are staggering. 1.1 billion euros from the local authorities, 40% of the project was funded by Europe, and the financing deal was officially signed in 2019. By 2030, when this canal is fully operational, we'll see millions of tons of goods transported in an environmentally friendly way, boosting the economy and cutting down on pollution. Now, before you get too excited, this project isn't without its challenges. Critics, including France's version of the Extinction Rebellion, have voiced concerns about the canal's environmental impact. They argue that while the canal might reduce road traffic, it could still damage ecosystems, and they're not convinced the project will truly reduce CO2 emissions. But despite the controversy, French officials and project leaders are confident. So what do you think? Is the Seine Nord Europe Canal going to be the Suez Canal of Europe, or maybe even better? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more.